You open your eyes. But this is not a soft, warm bed. There is no roof to shelter you. No fire to keep you warm. No sense of safety in this world. You are lying exposed on the cold ground. In the middle of a wilderness where everything wants to kill you. You are only 1.2 meters tall. Shorter than a modern 10 year old. If you stood next to a modern man, you would barely reach his chest. If you faced a saber-toothed lion, you wouldn't even be as tall as its front legs. But you're not just small, you are weak. You have no claws to defend yourself, no muscles to fight back, no speed to outrun danger. And yet, paradoxically, you are one of the first humans. You belong to Homo habilis, a name that means handyman. But in truth, you're not as handy as your name suggests. Your brain is only half the size of a modern human's. Not enough to think quickly or plan long term. You can make tools, but they are nothing more than crude stone flakes. Not weapons, not hunting gear, just simple tools to scrape meat off the carcasses left behind by stronger predators. You walk on two legs, but not fast enough to escape, nor strong enough to fight. You exist in a body that is disadvantaged in every way, and in this world, there is no place for the weak. And the worst part? You will never grow old. Your average lifespan is a mere 12 years. Today, the average person can live 73 years. A modern 12-year-old is still in school, with a lifetime ahead of them. But if you were homo habilis, surviving to 12 would already be a miracle, because most of your kind died long before reaching that age. Not from disease, not from old age, but because this world simply does not allow you to live any longer. Stepping out of your shelter to find food is a gamble with death. If you aren't torn apart by a saber-toothed lion, if you aren't dragged underwater by a giant crocodile, if you aren't ripped to pieces by a pack of hyenas, then starvation, disease, or even your own kind will eventually kill you. You are one of the first humans, but also one of the weakest and most unfortunate. This is not a life. This is a desperate struggle for survival. This is the worst time to be human. You might imagine Homo habilis as being similar to us, but the truth is very different. They were only 1.2 meters tall, 4 feet, the height of a modern 10-year-old, weighing less than 40 kilograms, 88 lbs. Even worse, they couldn't run fast like modern humans, nor could they climb trees as skillfully as monkeys. They could try to escape by climbing, but they weren't as agile as other primates. They could attempt to run, but their short legs and frail bodies made it impossible to outrun any of the predators of their time. They weren't good at anything, a species with no real place in this deadly ecosystem. But even if Homo habilis managed to avoid predators, hunger was an equally terrifying killer. They consumed more meat than any other human species of their time, but this only dragged them into life or death battles they could never win. Imagine a small Homo habilis desperately tearing off a scrap of meat from a leftover carcass on the savanna, while a pack of Pachycracuda hyenas, the size of lions, closes in, with their small bodies and lack of weapons. Homo habilis had no chance of keeping their meal, but the danger didn't end there. They also had one incredibly reckless habit, they liked to eat fish. This forced them to venture close to rivers where gigantic anthropophagus crocodiles lay in ambush. These crocodiles were unlike anything alive today. They grew up to 7.5 meters, 25 feet, long, weighed over a ton, and were even more powerful than modern saltwater crocodiles. One wrong step, and a small Homo habilis could be dragged underwater, never to return. But Homo habilis wasn't just threatened by the tooth and claw predators. They faced an even harsher reality, competition with their closest relatives. At least three other human species roamed Africa at the same time as Homo habilis, all superior in some way. These rivals didn't just steal their food, they may have killed and eaten Homo habilis. If Homo habilis was weak and survived by luck, then Homo erectus was the new ruler of the ancient world. Standing 1.8 meters, 5 foot 11, tall and weighing 70 to 80 kilograms, 154-176 lbs, they were at least 40 centimeters, 16 inches, taller and twice as heavy as Homo habilis. Their brains, 
ranging from 900 to 1,100 cubic centimeters, were 50% larger than those of Homo habilis, granting them strategic thinking, planning abilities, and group coordination. They crafted more advanced tools, including sharper stone blades, which enabled them to hunt actively rather than scavenging rotting carcasses like Homo habilis. They controlled fire, a game-changing advantage that allowed them to eat a wider variety of food, stay warm during cold nights, and ward off predators. Homo erectus was no longer a scavenger. They hunted in groups, planned attacks, and used wooden and stone weapons to take down large prey. When a group of Homo habilis encountered Homo erectus, the outcome was almost always certain doom. Fossil evidence shows that many Homo habilis skeletons bear cut marks from sharp tools, identical to those Homo erectus left on their prey. This suggests that Homo erectus may have killed Homo habilis, or even cannibalized them during times of food scarcity. Among the ancient human species, Paranthropus boise was terrifying in a completely different way. They weren't as tall as Homo erectus, nor were they smarter than Homo habilis, but they had one weapon no other human species possessed, a jaw so powerful it could crush bone. Standing 1.4 meters, 4 foot 7, tall and weighing 50 to 75 kilograms, 110-165 lbs, they were larger than Homo habilis but shorter than Homo erectus. They had the largest molars of any human species, up to two to three times the size of modern human teeth. Their jaw structure was incredibly strong, allowing them to grind down tough plant roots, hard seeds, and possibly even bones. Initially, scientists believed that Paranthropus boise was a strict herbivore, but recent chemical isotope analysis of their teeth suggests they ate meat as well. Even more disturbingly, fossil evidence indicates that during times of extreme food shortages, they may have eaten Homo habilis. This means that during periods of famine, Homo habilis didn't just have to fear predators, but also their own kind, species with jaws strong enough to crush their skulls. The silent competitor. Homo rudolfensis was not as terrifying as Homo erectus or Paranthropus boise, but they were still a major threat to Homo habilis. Unlike Homo erectus, Homo rudolfensis was not a predator, but they were far from weak. They could take control of water sources, claim better shelters, and secure the best food supplies. This pushed Homo habilis to the fringes of the ancient human world, leaving them with nowhere to survive. Even if Homo habilis managed to escape predators and rival human species, they could not outrun their greatest threat, nature itself. Around 1.8 million years ago, Earth underwent one of the most severe climate shifts in history. Rainy seasons shortened, rivers dried up, and water sources became scarcer than ever. Forests disappeared, replaced by barren grasslands, drastically reducing the supply of fruits and edible plants that Homo habilis relied on. Large animals migrated, making it far harder to find scavenged carcasses. Homo habilis, already weak, was now trapped in an even harsher world. With food running out, they were forced to rely on rotting carcasses. But stronger predators were also starving, and Homo habilis had no chance in the fight for survival. Meanwhile, Homo erectus adapted. They hunted. They used tools to butcher animals. They even controlled fire, allowing them to cook and consume a wider variety of foods. But Homo habilis? They remained scavengers. They remained prey. No more shelter. No more food. No more chances. Over time, Homo habilis was pushed in the most barren lands, where life barely clung on. They were hunted by Homo erectus, robbed of water sources by Homo rudolfensis, and possibly eaten by Paranthropus boise. No one knows exactly how the last moments of Homo habilis unfolded. But one thing is certain. They weren't fast enough to escape. They weren't strong enough to fight back. They weren't smart enough to adapt. And so, they vanished. They were one of the first humans, but also one of the weakest and most unfortunate. They never had a chance. They were not born to conquer the world. They were born to die, a fight against extinction. Despite their weaknesses, 
Homo habilis was not completely helpless. They found ways to extend their survival, even if only for a short while. Their greatest achievement was stone tool making, marking the first major technological leap in human history. These crude tools weren't for hunting, but they were sharp enough to extract bone marrow from carcasses, a rich source of fat and energy. Larger predators would devour the flesh of their prey, but they left behind bones, bones that Homo habilis could break open and consume. In addition, Homo habilis was not solitary. They lived in groups of up to 85 individuals, creating a system of mutual protection, food sharing, and care for the weak. A larger group meant more eyes watching for predators, better coordination to fend off hyenas, and care for the injured and young, something few other primates did. Thanks to these survival strategies, they did not go extinct immediately. In fact, they lasted nearly 700,000 years, a remarkable feat in evolutionary history. But no matter how Homo habilis tried to adapt, they were simply too weak to survive long term. Too small, standing only 1.2 meters, 4 feet tall. No match for larger humans like Homo erectus. Too, too slow to evolve, with a brain of just 500 to 687 cubic centimeters. 50% smaller than Homo erectus, making strategic thinking and advanced tool making impossible. Too primitive, relying on scavenging and gathering. While Homo erectus developed hand axes, spears, and even controlled fire. But the worst part? They weren't just outcompete. They may have been completely exterminated. With group hunting skills and superior weapons, Homo erectus took over fertile lands. They didn't just compete for food. They may have hunted Homo habilis as a threat to be eliminated. Some Homo habilis fossils bear cut marks from sharp stone tools, identical to the butchering marks left by Homo erectus on their prey. Some evidence even suggests that Homo habilis may have been eaten. In the end, Homo habilis had nowhere left to survive. Around 1.8 million years ago, the climate shifted dramatically. Rainy seasons shortened. Forests disappeared. Water sources dried up. With no fruit-bearing trees to forage from. With no carcasses left to scavenge. They became the last survivors in a world that no longer had a place for them. No one knows the exact moment Homo habilis disappeared. Perhaps they starved, while other human species thrived. Perhaps they were hunted down, wiped out by the rise of Homo erectus. Or perhaps, they simply faded away, because in a world of the strong, there was no room for the weak. If you found the story of Homo habilis fascinating, hit like to support the channel and subscribe so you don't miss more thrilling discoveries about the brutal history of human evolution. Do you think you could survive in the world of Homo habilis? Drop a comment below and share your thoughts. And turn on notifications now, because history has never been this intense.